Welcome back to Friday Beyond Spotlights. We have with us today British barrister and the first director of public prosecution for the Hong Kong SAR, Grenfell Cross. Who is Grenfell Cross? Well, he's a, he's a uh, lawyer, uh, a professional prosecutor. Uh, before, until, as you said, uh, 2009, I was a, uh, a prosecutor here in Hong Kong for many years, and before that, a prosecutor for a short time in, in London, in England. Uh, after I left the Department of Justice, I became uh, an international prosecutor uh, with the International Association of Prosecutors, and I am currently the vice chairman of their, their Senate. Uh, and uh, so I've always really been a prosecutor, uh, and uh, as, as part of my prosecutorial work, it's been a fascinating life. Before 1997, I often used to go to the Privy Council mm. uh, in London mm. to uh, represent uh, Hong Kong uh, in the appeals, which uh, went from the Court of Appeal uh, to, to London, which, has, which was then the ultimate uh, appellate court for, for Hong Kong, the Privy Council in Downing Street. So it's fascinating going into Downing Street, going through all the security, having your bags checked, mm. uh, and then making your way to the Privy Council offices, which were right next door to the Prime Minister's home at 10 Downing Street. Uh, and then going into the Privy Council itself, obviously it was uh, overawing and very nervous, nerve-wracking. Uh, but uh, it was fascinating to, to appear before the, the, uh, the law lords uh, and to uh, put the Hong Kong uh, case uh, for, for, the, for the Department of Just uh, well, the, the then legal department of Hong Kong. Yes, I remember the first case that I did in the Privy Council was in uh, 1988, uh, and uh, it was a triad society case uh, which, uh, which had been to the Court of Appeal, uh, and uh, the, the uh, Attorney General of Hong Kong wasn't happy with the, uh, with the decision of the Court of Appeal, so the Attorney General appealed to the, the Privy Council in London. Mm. So I was asked to go across and do the case. Uh, against a London Queen's Council. So I did the case, I remember, in, uh, at, the, at the end of 1988, uh, and then we had to wait a, a month or so until we got the result. Did you win? We won the case. Well yes, done. yes. Well done. I was very, 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 very chuffed with that, but uh, not as happy as my father. <laughs> he, he was more excited than me, and so uh, he chose to commemorate that occasion by, by giving me a pocket watch. Oh, can you show us? Which, uh, which is here. It's uh, an, an, English, uh, an English pocket watch, which is still keeping good time. And then he ha also had the date of the judgment, which was about a month later, uh, <laughs> engraved on it. So he was extremely chuffed, and that made me very happy too. Grenfell, I understand you've brought another item to share with us today. Indeed I have, Nick. Please share with us. Well, Nick, I've always been very interested in history mm. uh, from a very early age. Uh, and in fact, I almost became a historian. Mm. But uh, I, I ended up, uh, of course, going into the law. And uh, I've been fascinated by the history of not only Hong Kong, but of uh, China itself. Mm. And I'm now very much involved in the Hong Kong Collectors Society. Uh, I've been quite interested in recent times in the history of uh, the, the, the late Qing dynasty, the last emperor, Emperor, mm. emperor Pu Yi, uh, and the, the system that operated uh, during his time. Mm. Uh, and I will remember that on my first visit to Tianjin mm. uh, in 1991, I was by myself and I was walking around the various uh, streets of, of, the, of the city uh, and I found a, a little antique shop. Mm. And uh, <laughs> while I was in there, I, I, I saw a, a very attractive stone. Uh, and uh, obviously, I, I, I don't speak uh, Putawa, mm. and I couldn't speak to the, the shop owner. But we negotiated a price nonetheless. Mm. Uh, and I, I brought it back to Hong Kong. Mm. Uh, and uh, I took it to a, an, an expert here in Hong Kong and asked him what it was. And he told me that it was a, a Mandarin hat button. Oh, yeah. can you show us? Yeah, I can, yeah. So this was the, the hat button that I found. Wow. Uh, and it's actually, it's, a, it's coral, as I say, mm. uh, and there were nine grades of Mandarin, uh, and uh, this was grade number two. So in the old days of the Qing dynasty, mm. you could tell the rank of the officials uh, by the hat button uh, in, the, in the top of their hat. Oh, I so, see. Well, so this was number two, uh, and I, I always wanted to get number one as well. Uh, and uh, it took me some time to find it, but about five, six years ago, I was on a visit to Ulaanbaatar mm. in, in uh, Mongolia. Mm. Uh, and uh, again, I went to an antique shop, and uh, what should I see on a shelf there but uh, the Mandarin hat button number one, wow. which, is, uh, which is ruby, uh, and which is this one. So this is, this is very interesting indeed, because th mm. there you have the, 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 the hat button. So I then said about... Uh, building up a complete collection, which, mm. I, which I've now got. Uh, so whenever I went to antique shops, and in, particularly in Beijing, uh, I, I was able to, to complete the set. Uh, and I just brought one other one to show you. 
mm. this is the this is the number three. Right. This is the sapphire. Right. Uh, which is uh, grade three Mandarin would would wear that one. Wow. So uh, it's very interesting and uh, it's fascinating once you do study uh, the the late uh, Chinese history, uh, particularly in the Qing Dynasty. Can I invite you to share your well wishes for Hong Kong? Well, Hong Kong, I think, now has a, a great future ahead of it. Uh, it has a new a national security uh, regime, which is working extremely well and has restored stability uh, and decency to Hong Kong. Uh, it has a new electoral system, which uh, has ensured that uh, the city can once again function normally, that it has a responsible legislature uh, who will enact the laws which the, the city needs. Uh, and now that Hong Kong has returned to uh, normality, uh, there are good hopes, I think, that uh, Hong Kong will now go from strength to strength, of course, once the, the pandemic has been resolved, uh, and that we have a very bright future ahead of us, uh, not only within China generally, with China shortly becoming the world's largest economy, uh, but also in the Greater Bay Area. So as long as the people in Hong Kong take full advantage uh, of the opportunities which are there uh, and which are now becoming accessible to them through legal uh, and other professional uh, qualifications, uh, then the... the, the uh, in the, the sky is the limit. Grenfell, you've been for years supporting um, protection of children. Uh, could you share some tips for our young generation? Well, uh, when I first came to Hong Kong uh, many years ago, uh, one of the reasons I, I came was that I saw great opportunities in Hong Kong, I saw great challenges, and I saw a great future. Uh, and once I got here, I, I, I saw all of those were fulfilled. Uh, and that Hong Kong still has great opportunities, great challenges, and an even greater future uh, than when I first came out here uh, all those years ago. And I think it's very important for the younger generation to focus uh, on this uh, and to realize that they do have a great chance uh, in life. Hong Kong, of course, has marvelous schools. It has great universities, as is acknowledged around the world, uh, and its uh, various faculties are extremely highly regarded uh, in the academic world uh, internationally. So it's very important that people do take advantage of the educational opportunities which are available to them. Uh, and then once they, they qualify, the sky really uh, is the, the limit. Thank you, Grenfell. Grenfell, um, let's get a bit more personal. I'd like to fire you some rapid questions. What is your favorite color? Uh, blue. Your favorite ice cream flavor? Uh, vanilla. Favorite drink? Uh, probably a gunner. Favorite place to eat? Uh, Chu Chow restaurant. A place that you would bring your friends from overseas to? Oh, I normally take them to Lama Island. Favorite type of music? Uh, probably rhythm and blues. Favorite song? You know Alicia Keys? Yeah. Girl on Fire, I like that one. And your favorite childhood game? A game called Conkers. I don't know if you know Conkers, but they, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a round, uh, fruit or, or around uh, nut that grows on trees and you would put a, a string through it uh, and then put a knot at the end and then you would play with your friends you you'd, you'd try and knock oh. destroy each other's conquerors yeah. how do you relax uh well I, I i i try and go walking and hiking as much as i can on the on the island do you have any hidden talents well my wife says i make good breakfasts the last book you read that was one by uh a historian called Andrew Roberts, which, is, which was his life of Napoleon Bonaparte. The biggest misconception about you? Well, many people know I'm bad at languages, and they think that uh, I don't understand any Cantonese, but that's a misconception, Nick. <laughs> Your proudest moments? Proudest? Oh, I think it would have to be appointing, uh, having been appointed uh, the first DPP of Hong Kong after the handover uh, in 1997. The nicest thing anyone has ever said uh, well, as you know, Nick, I, I'm, a, I'm a professional prosecutor and have been for many, many years. Uh, and one of the best things that you can say to a prosecutor is that uh, you're a very fair prosecutor. So I was always very happy when people told me that. And your biggest fear? My biggest fear is being trapped in the lift. <laughs> I suffer from claustrophobia and I'd hate to be trapped in a lift. Biggest mistake? Biggest mistake. Well, I don't think I made, unfortunately, I don't, I don't think I made too many mistakes, but uh, in retrospect, it would probably have been better if, uh, when I was still at school, I tried harder to learn foreign languages. I was hopeless at languages, but uh, and I largely gave up for that reason. But maybe if I'd tried harder, I could have made a bit more progress. 
qualities you admire about your parents? Well, like uh, most good parents, they were very devoted. They were very committed to me. They wanted to inspire me. And uh, I remember my father in particular was always a great believer that even though you'll, you'll encounter setbacks in life, uh, don't let them get you down. Pick yourself up and, uh, and uh, get on with life. And uh, it's important never to accept defeat. A setback is not a defeat. So uh, always pick yourself up and always fight back. Your dream job. Dream job. Well, anything helping Hong Kong, really. Great. Mm. Um, what advice would you give your younger self? When you go through life, you do have setbacks, and they make you depressed. But uh, try and look at the bigger picture uh, and look at the long term, that today's setback can turn into tomorrow's triumph. Thank you, Grenfell. Well, thank you for joining us on Friday Beyond Spotlights. Be well. So that's a legendary globetrotter who defends the rule of law. People will not forget his contributions to the Hong Kong justice system. Thank you for watching Friday Beyond Spotlights. Till next time, goodbye. <laughs>